Hey everyone, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm still with Yvonne. How are you doing, Yvonne? Great. Good. Great. Well, we spoke about healing mm. and that was a really nice topic. It was a topic that you could speak a lot a lot about more, right? You could you could talk about it more and more. But in this episode, we're speaking about narcissism. Mm-hmm. And we want to speak about in the sense of could my pastor be one mm. or could I be one, mm. right? But in, in a general sense, what would that word mean? Yeah, so narcissism is talked about a lot these days. Uh, it's, you know, in a psychological type field. But what it is, is you got characteristics of you want to be the center of attention. Uh, you, you know, the narcissist has no self-awareness uh, they they always have to be right. They always have to have the last say. They they can't accept anything that shows that they are you know lower in any sense in a discussion in in you know anything. Um, like I'm saying, this this is general. Like you can find people like that maybe uh, in your relationship, uh, maybe in your family, in your friend circle, in your work. So this is just a general sense before we go into how it applies in the church, but. A lot of uh, some of the things are like compulsive lying and uh, gaslighting. So gaslighting, uh, I'll just sort of tell you where that came from. If you don't know, there was a movie called Gaslight, and uh, they've taken uh, the concept of that movie, which means you're lying to someone, and then when they confront you, you make them feel like they don't know what they're talking about. You make them doubt themselves. That's what gaslighting is. So um, if I came and I stole a pen from Martin, and then Martin comes to confront me and says, hey, man, you stole my pen, right? And I'd be like, you didn't even have a pen there. Like, are you sure? Are you feeling all right? Like, it's gaslighting is when you actually make someone doubt themselves. Um, and, And all of these are very evil traits. I think, you know, you know, lying, lack of self awareness, lack of repentance. Uh, I, I think they're, they're very evil, satanic. Uh, but but we're talking about, you know, how does this apply in church? How does this apply in leadership? And how does this apply in people? So the first one is in leadership. I'm not saying that, you know, pastors and <laughs> ministers are bad people. But what people need to be aware of and people need to be careful of, if you're a narcissist, if someone is a narcissist, that position is very appealing. So they would want to go to there. A lot of pastors are just really good, kind-hearted, you know, you know, pure-hearted. But an evil person will see that pastor position and, you know, he's always in the spotlight. That's what they want. He's always got the microphone. He's got a lot of people around him. Just sort of listening, you know, he, he's, he's the shepherd of people. That's what a pastor is. That's actually where the word comes from. And you're surrounded by people, like, you got to think, you're surrounded by Christians. Now, this is debatable, but uh, uh, another thing that narcissists do is manipulation, right? So you're surrounded by Christians, which is debatable that Christians are actually easily manipulated. You can, I've actually been manipulated because, you know, Christians are kind hearted. Christians always, you know, want to help. They always want to give of themselves to others. And then you have like, you know, doormat type uh, theology, not doormat theology, but, you know, the Christian doormat idea where people just walk over you because you're a Christian. And so, so the narcissist sees, well, you're surrounded by these people who are easily, you can, you can manipulate them. You can give them, make them feel guilty. Now, I was in a situation where um, there was a person who I believe was a narcissist. He wasn't a Christian at all. Uh, And I was talking to him about Christianity and things. And I found that he would use emotional blackmail to try to manipulate me, to take advantage of the fact that I'm a a Christian, I'm a kind-hearted person. uh, and But this person, he wasn't. But he would... Pretend, you know, he's interested in Christianity just to sort of feed my, you know, to Mm. keep it going. Um, So, yeah, I think, 
that is the reason why a narcissist will be really, really want a position uh, in in Christian leadership because yeah, yeah. it feeds all of those things. Well, well the, the Bible describes the leadership to be a type of uh, opportunity to serve, right? That's right. And even if you look at Peter when he was encouraging the fellow shepherds, right, saying don't, don't take that as an opportunity to have power over mm. God's people, take it as an opportunity to serve and love these people and minister to them. So I believe you can have that perspective to say, I want to take that position to lead. But the person who's called to be to that position is, I want to take that position to serve. So I think it's the same position. It's the person that goes into that position. What is their motive, mm -hmm. right? For a narcissist, his motive is to say, I've got a small business here. Generates wealth. Uh, I've got crowd that get to listen to me every week and love me and tell me how great of a job I'm doing. Yeah, that's a good position for a narcissist. But there are people who are called by God and say, oh, I really don't care about what people say. I might hurt a few people's feelings, but I'm still going to preach the word of God. Um, if the church is not generous, I'm still going to serve God. I'm going to find a job on the side just to make sure that someone is overseeing the soul of, of the people in the church, which is what elders do. They're overseers uh, of people's souls in the church. So I, I think where we differentiate is how would my pastor, like, because a person can ask, is my pastor a narcissist, for example? How would my pastor respond if I show him an error? Yeah, that's that's good. That's how good how would how would my pastor respond if someone disagrees with him? It's nothing to do with right and wrong. It's just two mm -hmm. different opinions. How would my pastor respond if the limelight is not on him? Yeah, right. Right. I I think these are things that you can notice whether your pastor is taking a place of control. And, and one, one big one is self-accountability. Self-accountability. I've actually, yeah. I've actually seen someone where, um, you know, there was some messages, something went wrong with a person. And the uh, I, I sort of admitted a wrong. I did something, like not intentionally, it just it was like a mistake. Mm. Um, but the other person did a lot of wrong. Um, but they jumped on the fact that of my wrong, and they pretty much relinquished all of their wrongs and, and, and put all the blame on me. That's yeah. lack of self-accountability. Oh, of course, of course. The, the idea that when you point out a flaw and they would give an excuse instead mm -hmm. of seek yeah. repentance. Yeah. Like, my goodness, I've even heard a story where a pastor cheated on his wife. Mm -hmm. And when he got caught, he's like, oh, but David did it. <laughs> You're like... Are you serious? That's like, Wait. that's kindergarten, Wait. right? He did it. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. As you said, it's lack of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. They would think that they are that smart. They can just tell a lie and people will buy it. Well, like I was saying, uh, the evil, the satanic traits of, of narcissism, lack of self-awareness means lack of repentance. We know that Satan will never repent. Mm. Whereas humans, uh, even though they make mistakes, you know, repentance is there. God's arms are always open for repentance. Um, but yeah, just these people don't want to admit. Yeah, well, well, that's the issue. It's whose child are you? Are you a child of God? Are you a child of the devil? Mm. And whoever's child you are, you're going to start taking traits mm. from, from your father. Like for us, we're called to be like his son, Jesus Christ. Mm. And... What it, however Jesus lived his life, he, he could have said, I'm above everything. And that would not even be a prideful statement because it's true. true. God, he is God in the flesh. But he chose to leave heaven, right? He did not find equality with God to be a robber, right? He came and took the form of a servanthood. The point is, anyone that wants to come into that position as a Christian, right, in, into a leadership position. They need to leave their carnality behind 
and come and serve within the mind of the spirit, not within the mind of the flesh. Yeah. The mind of the flesh has all these things, envy, pride, mm -hmm. and, and, and so on, right? Selfishness. But the mind of the spirit comes, it's the spirit of humility. Mm -hmm. It's the spirit that is willing to be corrected as human beings. It's a spirit that is willing to serve without receiving any recognition. Absolutely. So the point is, some people might even attach narcissism to a mental health disorder. Mm -hmm. God can take that away. If he wants, if God wants to use a narcissist mm -hmm. and turn that person to be a Christian and serve the Lord, then God will control those desires in that person. Mm -hmm. I believe that's yeah. absolutely possible. Yeah. God can heal. You know, um, they call it, there's in psychology, they call it the dark triad, you know, psychopathy where you've got no empathy, you're a psychopath. Um, mm. But a psychopath is not someone who's just going around killing people. Actually, yeah. there are people, you know, in normal world, um, yeah. they have no uh, empathy for other people. They only care about themselves. Um, and, and in the psychology world, they say, well, that's not curable. Narcissism is not really curable. They can't help that person. But I believe God can. I believe God can, some, if someone has psychopathic traits, you know, have no empathy for other people, any care for themselves, essentially that is what the cure that God's offering. Mm. He changes your heart. Yeah. And there was one study where it shows under cer cer circumstances, the brain can change. And so people who had psych psychopathy um, actually changed, got healed from it. Uh, so I, I believe uh, with God it's possible. But I just want to touch on one thing uh, is... I believe that, you know, in terms of leadership, I believe that God tests everyone who has the mind of becoming a leader, um, you know, is, is serving people. And the way that God tests people is to put them in a place where they don't have any of that. They don't have the following. They don't have the money. Um, you know, they don't have people, you know, surrounding them. And, and God wants to see, what are you in it for? Are yeah. you in it? F are you want to? Are you serving me for those things, or will you still serve me without those things? Yeah, Amen, Amen. Well, we've talked about how can Leadership. you identify yeah. whether your pastor is a narcissist or not. Mm. But let's look at ourselves. Yeah, you know your spiritual uh, narcissist. Yes, <laughs> yeah. You as as a person who's part of a church. Mm or just as a Christian um, that's coming into a church, how could you notice, well, well maybe I am practicing narcissism in, in yeah. my, my life, right? I think we touched on it when we talked about healing in the last episode. And uh, it's, <clears throat> you, you're coming, not, narcissism in terms of everything is about me. Mm. I don't care about anyone else. I don't care about God's, essentially, I don't care about God's desires. I don't care about my brothers and sisters. I don't care about the people around me. I want what I want for me. I want prosperity. I want the healing. I want the blessings from God. Essentially, that is spiritual narcissism. And that's why when we were talking about healing and we were saying there's that toxic side of it, uh, that maybe if you're not, if you're not a like that to begin with when you started, but you are groomed to become like that, you know, where it is just a prosperity gospel. Uh, and I've actually seen, and I've noticed when people who are into this prosperity gospel, it's all, look at my great blessings. You know, God is doing all these great things and maybe God is, but um, when it comes to breaking themselves for the sake of someone else, they don't, they don't want to go there. Yeah. Oh, it's it's actually pretty important. And I think today w one of the things that I've been noticing a lot uh, as as a Christian, it's that the, the local church that I'm going to now, it's not good enough for me. Mm -hmm. Right? It's I want the best church for me because I'm worth it. Right? I believe that I deserve the best church. And you look at that person's life, you're like, you just go there to warm a seat. <laughs> like you want a church that, for example, oh, it has a, 
air condition it has kids ministries has this has that has that um they do things over the weekend and you know whenever i want i call my pastor and on the second ring he's he's there yeah. he's going to pick up his phone celebrity preachers visiting yeah. you know so so the point is I want a church that provides all that for me and I'm going to hop from one church to another until I find something that is worth me. Yeah, absolutely. And you you look at that person you're like, well, "What what are you bringing to the church?" Mm. I I believe that attitude that we bring into our faith today, especially with, you know, travel is so easy now. I I could travel half an hour and go to a church pretty far away. Yeah. Um as long as it suits me. Um while previously you what you'll find to locally yeah, pretty much yeah. You, if you lived in a, in a village like hundreds of years ago, mm. whatever church there was there, that's your church, that's your home. Mm. But now it's like, yeah, I can go across the city. I'll yeah. find something that suits me best. And I believe that 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 attitude it's not biblical it's 100% narcissistic it, it, it yeah. is it is it's very it's built on pride and it shows selfishness selfishness cuz to the church G, uh, paul says the church is the body of christ mm-hmm. and body parts all have their role we don't go and say give me the best body and i'm going to be that little tiny you know fat part where it just sits there and doesn't do anything that's me because i deserve the best yeah and to me i've always had the attitude of when i go to a church i'm like is there a need in this church and can i be part of it to help in that need yeah that's always been my attitude it's not like god give me a church that has everything great and i'm just going to go there on a recliner just relax. I can give you a testimony. I've been in really small humble churches and I've been in really big um you know these mega churches and uh, it, it's really down to you. It's, there's nothing wrong with being in a mega church. Mm. It's really down to you. So uh when I was in a small humble church we only had a couple of people you know choir was very small but I really felt the warmth of the Holy Spirit there. And at the same and you can still have that even if you go to a mega church but it all comes down to you are you okay with just going where god wants to use you if you do that that is when you will have you know the holy spirit with you you know you you will have a close relationship with the lord and um otherwise if you're just going to these mega churches you're going to have problems actually you you're going to you're going to you see a lot of people that have like disputes and disagreements and and actually a lot of problems um and then like you're saying they they f- tend to hop between different churches there's no satisfaction in that at all and it's actually it's worse because your selfishness is within the christian realm um and that's the sort of the sacrilegious part of it what you're doing is you know makes it more wrong i think Yeah. Uh, I think also on a personal level it's as we spoke like with 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 a pastor or, or an elder um they don't hold themselves accountable, they don't believe that they can make anything wrong. I think that's something that also applies to everyone in the congregation. Mm-hmm. It's a human thing. Yeah. Where you got to come and say, "Yeah, I could be wrong at this." You know, it's um open I, to I'm repentance. sharing my case. Just yeah. open to repentance and correction. Yeah. That's what being a Christian's about. And, and putting excuses aside, mm. you meet a lot of people that say, "Oh yeah, I'm going through this sin, but because I'm dealing with this issue." It's an excuse. Yeah, you're like, okay, why don't you give birth to God, and He'll fix them for you? Mm. Oh no, no, but I have this issue. Yeah, you're attaching yourself to this problem, so you can continue with this sin. Mm-hmm. Let go of the problem, mm-hmm. and you can let go of of that sin. So it it's very important to us as Christians is not not before we point the finger at someone else just look at ourselves Paul says examine yourself you examine yourself and say lord there's no sense of humility in me there's nothing humble about me lord i want to be like your son jesus mm-hmm. can i be transformed into that 
Can you get rid of that pride in my life, that narcissism, where I believe that I'm better than the person next to me? I'm more educated than the person next to me. I'm wealthier than the person next to me. Well, Lord, can you take away that? Can, can I start walking in the, in the spirit so I don't gratify the way of the flesh? That's maybe a good start. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to say, man, or should we end it there? Um, I guess maybe another thing is if what do you do if if you are dealing with a narcissist, maybe your leader's a narcissist, and uh, or, or also with yourself, you've already answered what you do with yourself, mm. and that is like if if everyone did what you said, the world would be a different place. Yeah. Um, well, maybe we can do a another video about it. Yeah. Yeah. But if your leader's a narcissist, um, I think. Maybe they say, or this is more professional psychological, is don't confront them. Um, maybe just distance yourself. So that's what they say. I don't know. I guess leave it to God as well. That's the yeah. biggest thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, to me, I would say as my final statement to that is um, display a spirit of humility. Yeah. And that can bring conviction to that person. If they are a Christian, They'll yeah, be convicted. Of course. And two, rely on the power of prayer. Yeah. Pray for these people. Yeah. God can change their hearts. Yeah. And these people yeah. can change. That's a really good point yeah. that you brought up. Uh, if you see yeah. someone who's like that. Oh, yes. No one is beyond saving. Mm. Jesus can save anyone that goes to your church. Like that's, yeah, that's who Jesus is. Um, God bless you. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments if you've gone through some of the stories, which I just mentioned one. Um, and you've heard someone who was so prideful, so narcissistic that he could not or she could not um, be blamed. They they just gave an excuse to that. So let, let us know. God bless you. Take care. See ya.